Good afternoon and welcome back to another episode of Cheap, Tasty and Filling. Yes, I'm back with another recipe. I know, but just to warn you, this series won't be going on forever. It will stop at some point and have a break. Not sure when that will be. Let me think about it and come back to you. But yes, I'm here with another firm family favourite, certainly in our family anyway. It's cauliflower cheese, but with a little bit of a twist. I'm doing a rusty topping. So a rusty is a little bit like a latka, and you might have seen my video on how to make latkas. It's grated potato. <laughs> What's not to love? Grated potato, which is basically cooked until it's golden and crisp and gorgeous, and I thought, how can I sort of make a cauliflower cheese a little bit more special? It's already a special dish, certainly for me. I could eat a whole one, no problem. I literally could. I'm also going to show you in this video how to make a cauliflower cheese that doesn't end up with a watery sauce. This is one of the common mistakes that people make with cauliflower. They overcook it. They make a sauce that isn't thick enough and they add the sauce at the wrong time to the cauliflower when it's still got moisture in it and is still giving off moisture as part of its cooking process and it tends to dilute the sauce. So you pull it out of the oven, looks gorgeous on the top, but as you go in the sauce is watery. You will not get that with this recipe. It will be thick and creamy and unctuous. <laughs> I promise. And the topping will be golden and crisp and just divine. I'm serving this as a lunch and I'm going to accompany it with some simple roasted veg. This dish is probably going towards the decadent end of the spectrum rather than being downright dirt cheap. It uses a few decadent ingredients, but it's still very good value to make. And this will serve, I would say, as a side dish, as a small side dish, four to six portions. As a lunch dish with an accompaniment, um, you probably get three to four portions out of it. We'll certainly get four portions with something else. So it's still incredibly good value and a lot cheaper than buying a pre-packed small cauliflower cheese from the supermarket, which is probably gonna cost you between two and three pounds anyway. I think the total cost for this dish probably comes in at just over three pounds. Yeah. And of course, we know exactly what ingredients are going into it. In terms of flavourings, there's nothing complicated in this dish at all. It's very simple seasonings uh, that most people have in. So let's get on with it, shall we? The quicker we make it, the quicker we can eat it and enjoy it for a gorgeous lunch or dinner or breakfast. Why not? I love cauliflower cheese, don't you? Come with me, join me in the kitchen now. We're in the kitchen. To make the cauliflower cheese, we've obviously got some cauliflower. I'm also going to be using this. You might be wondering what that is. Well, that's the core of the cauliflower, which is absolutely full of flavor and nutrients. There is no point in throwing that away. I've removed all the leaves and you can see where I've cut the cauliflower florets from. So we're going to be grating that. More of that later. So I've cut the cauliflower into even sized pieces and when the florets are too large just cut them in half and then they'll lay flat on your oven proof dish. So similar sized florets. We've got some olive oil, we've got some ground almonds, we've got some oats, some flour, some milk, some cheese. 
and for the topping the rusty topping I've got four large potatoes these are actually from a plot neighbor I've got some lemon juice which we're going to be using to stop the potatoes from browning too quickly um, I've also got my microwavable bowl which I will do do my cauliflower in I've got my oven proof bowl which will be baking the cauliflower cheese in and I've got my trusty T-fowl frying pan with a lid which we will be making our rosti topping in. So first thing to do we need to get this cauliflower partially cooked. We're only going to cook it for a couple of minutes and we're going to do that in the microwave. I use this old bowl which is uh, a pottery bowl which has got a couple of chips in it but it's great for microwaving because a plate sits quite neatly on top. It's important when we microwave that we have a good seal but there is a way of the air getting out which it will do with this. Okay, I'm going to pop my cauliflower into this bowl. It's been washed, thoroughly washed. Pop it in. Lovely. And to that, we're going to add uh, what I call a splash of boiling water. I'm using boiling water from the kettle because it means the microwave won't have to work as hard. And I'm probably going to put the equivalent of a tablespoon, maybe a little bit more, not much at all. And this is quite good for cauliflower cheese because you do not want your cauliflower to be absolutely sopping wet. I've got a trick to show you how to stop that from happening. Let's get this microwave first. So lid on, microwave for... I think we're going to say two and a half minutes, I think. I'm just rearranging it slightly so it's not pressing up against the lid. And there's a good fit. Into the microwave, a couple of minutes or so, full power. Now, while that's doing in the microwave, we've got our oven proof dish ready. When the cauliflower comes out of the microwave I'm going to pop it into a warm oven in this dish just to let any of the excess water come off then we can be fairly assured that we're not going to have a sort of pool of of water in the base when we put our sauce on it's not going to dilute our sauce because we want that sauce to be thick and creamy rather than thin and watery at the bottom so we're going to try and guard against that so I'm just waiting for that microwave and then we'll pop the cauliflower into here okay so that's been microwaving actually for about three minutes so I don't know whether you can see that steam coming off that started the cooking process Yeah, it's quite hot. Fish your cauliflower out. I don't know whether you can see, but the stems have started to go really bright green. Okay, so our cauliflower's in here. Don't worry about arranging it at the moment. We're going to pop that into the oven. It's a fan oven for on 80 degrees, so it's very, very, you know, cool. It's a cool oven. Just to let the cooking process carry on a little bit longer, but to, to remove any excess water from the cauliflower. And that can stay in the oven while you prepare the other stuff. 
Okay, so the next thing we need to tackle is our potatoes. So I'm going to partially peel these and we're then going to grate them along with the core of the cauliflower. So we had a slight change of plan. I started to peel the potatoes that Paul had been given by a plot neighbour and unfortunately they were all green, which means they weren't stored properly in a dark enough place. So it had become what we call exposed. So unfortunately they were unusable. So Paul very kindly whizzed up to the shop and got me some shop bought spuds. So in this bowl, we've got three potatoes plus the shredded core of the cauliflower doused in some lemon juice to stop oxidization and then squeezed in a clean tea towel to get all the excess moisture out of them. So what we want to do next is pop these into the frying pan and start the cooking process in order that they soften. Let's get on with that. Okay, I've got my tea towel as usual. Heat on, medium heat. A little splash of olive oil. Not too much. We're just going to let that come up to temperature. All we're going to do is pop the potato into the pan. Spread it about. Now the intention is not to brown this. The intention is to start the softening process. So I'm going to put the lid on and I'm going to turn the heat down and I'm just going to let them start to cook in the remainder of their own juices. If they do get a little golden in places, that really doesn't matter. We're not going to worry about that. And, you know, also what you're not going to worry about is the potatoes sort of sticking together. It's not an issue. We will need to occasionally give it a little stir. But keep the heat low and it should be fine. Okay, turn that heat right down pop the lid on and we'll just come back to it periodically. So I've taken the cauliflower out of the oven and it's warm but you can see there's no sign of moisture and actually it feels really lovely to touch. It feels as though it's starting to really cook. So we're going to arrange it so that the florets are sort of facing us. in a pleasing manner. So we have more of a, a surface to put our topping onto. The stalks are all facing downwards. The florets are facing upwards. They feel good actually, feel really nice, starting to yield, but not falling apart. The worst cauliflower cheeses are the ones that are just a complete mush. Can't bear that. This can stay out of the oven now, on the top, to one side, and it's time to make our sauce. We're gonna be using a roux, and we need to bear in mind that we've got to make enough sauce to really cover the majority of the stalks, because those are the, the bits that take the time to cook. Yeah, the heads, the floret part, the, the curds, I think they call them, they cook quite quickly, but the stalks will take a little bit longer. So enough sauce to sort of half come halfway up. I guess we'll be using a good half a pint to half a litre of, of stock, uh, of milk, sorry. Um, and I may water that down with a little bit of stock. So let's get on with it again. You know, you do need to eyeball things sometimes. You do need to just make an estimate as you're going as to, to what amount you need to make of certain things like sauces or gravies. You know, we don't spend our time measuring everything out when, when we're experienced cooks. 
we just get on with it and we go with the flow. I'm going to move this to the back of the cooker and get our saucepan out. Before we start that sauce, I'm just going to check on these. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, it's fine. Plenty of moisture coming off, you can see from the lid. So they're effectively steaming rather than frying. Let's give them a little stir. We kind of want it to be dry-ish because we want the potato to really crisp and crunch up when it becomes the topping. But we don't want it to be raw. So we're giving it a head start. This is, I guess it's, it's what par cooking is all about. You're part cooking something. When you make roast potatoes, very often you will parboil them, which means to part boil them. So you boil them for a certain length of time just to start the cooking process so they won't be raw in the, in the center when you roast them. And even with shredded potato, it's, um, it's hard not to cook this when it's on as a topping because it's shredded potato. Therefore, the surface area of each piece is um, quite small. So they cook through, but we're, we're just giving it a head start. It's a little bit of an insurance policy, I guess. Okay, that's looking good. It's looking great. Lid back on. Let's make our sauce the most important element of this. I think I'll also mention at this point is we're gonna turn the oven up so it can heat. And we're gonna turn it up to 180 fan, ready for the cauliflower cheese and the roasted vegetables to go in. So, my trusty Ikea, my old Ikea, heat on. I would say a good tablespoon of olive oil. You can use butter if you want. This is an extra virgin olive oil. It's delicious. It's very rich, actually. I'm going to add a heaped tablespoon of plain flour. A heaped tablespoon. Turn the heat down, don't let it brown. Give it a really good stir. This is the basis of your roux. You've seen me do this before. Make sure that heat is right down and just let that froth for about two minutes. Don't let it brown. You could let it brown if you wanted a brown gravy, but we don't want that. We're doing a white sauce. Remember, this is the basis for most gravies and sauces, a flour thickener. Some people use corn flour to thicken. That's not a roux sauce. This is the roux. This is melted hot fat with flour allowed to froth and cook so the starch granules expand and burst which in turn creates a thick sauce once we add the liquid and it's important to let this flour cook out for two minutes so you don't have a floury taste nobody likes a floury sauce okay that's been about two minutes we add our liquid and we stir all the time. I'm using a wooden spoon. I do sometimes use a whisk, but I'm gonna show you the wooden spoon method because not everybody has a whisk. It's great if you've got a really heavy pan. This one's not too heavy, but I use it all the time. And if you're using cold liquid, it will sort of make a noise as you as you hit the pan with the liquid. So in we go with some liquid, stirring all the time, not too much liquid. Keep stirring, 
just try and blend all of that flour with the liquid. It will start to seize and you think, oh my goodness me, what's going wrong? Don't worry. Add a little bit more liquid and just keep on beating it. If you had the heat too high at this point, the lumps would actually cook like little balls of dough. And that's when you end up with a lumpy sauce. So it's important to blend everything now to a smooth paste, as you can see. I'm really working it. You can hear in my voice. Add more liquid. I'm using oat milk. Notice how this just blends. It should be smooth and glossy. We need more liquid. Don't increase the heat though, not yet. We're aiming for a thick sauce. Now it's really looking smooth and glossy, quite thick. What we're going to do is just gradually turn up the heat and then we're going to gauge how it thickens. Stirring all the time. You know, you have to put in a bit of work with a good sauce like this. It's not always easy. I mean, I'm stood here, I've got the oven on, so that's heated up now. I've got the gas on, the kitchen is warm and I'm stirring. I'm working. You've got to work at cookery. And I'm standing up, which, you know, standing up for a long time in one position for me isn't great. But hey, I'm doing it. Now, as it gets warmer, you will notice that it will start to thicken again. And you'll be able to gauge how much more liquid you're going to need. And indeed, whether you want to add more milk or whether you want to add stock instead. That's starting to thicken again. We're also going to need to take into consideration the fact that we're going to add quite a bit of volume in terms of the cheese. Now you can see it's starting to bubble. that to simmer for around five minutes on a low heat. Let's go back to our rosti topping. Let's lift the lid. Oh, that's hot. Whoa, plenty of moisture coming out there and also plenty of moisture cooking the potato. Let's give that a stir and a check starting to go golden underneath, that's fine. You don't really want to get it any further than that. I'm just giving it a good stir. Put the lid back on and turn the heat off now, because this is where we want it to be, just starting to go golden. Lovely. So our sauce has been simmering on a low light for about five, five minutes or so. It's ready for its flavorings now. We're going to start with the cheese. 
I've got approximately 200 grams of cubed cheddar. It's mature cheddar. Make sure your heat is very, very low. We're going to add a generous amount of black pepper. Oops, sorry about the shadow. Really good amount. If you don't like black pepper, that's fine. Choose a seasoning that complements the cheese. We're going to be adding half a teaspoon of sea salt and a teaspoon of English mustard. You could use French, you could use Dijon, you could use whole grain, whatever takes your fancy. But bear in mind, these are complementary flavors. And with a dish like this, you don't want to mask the flavor of the cauliflower. Once that cheese is melted, you're ready to continue building the dish. Okay, so we've got all our elements ready. Let's build the dish. The first thing I'm going to do is over the cauliflower, I'm going to sprinkle some ground almonds. I'm using ground almonds because A, this will help to absorb any excess liquid should it come out of the cauliflower during the cooking process. Plus, the flavor of almonds goes really well with cauliflower and broccoli. We're gonna add our cheese sauce next. Pour over the cheese sauce. Evenly. This is the moment when you hope you've got enough. Yeah, that looks fine. Then we're going to add our potato and cauliflower core mix. I'm using two spoons to do this. I'm just breaking it up. Perfect. I'm going to use a fork just to spread it around evenly. Don't press it down. If anything, you want it as broken up as possible. I'm just going to give it a little quick season with a little finely ground sea salt. Just a small amount, a little bit of black pepper over the top, just a little bit, and then finally a handful of rolled oats for extra nutrition and extra crunch. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is prepare my vegetables, which I'm going to roast to go along with this. So all I've done is chopped some celery, some peppers, some tomatoes, doused them in a little olive oil, and both of these dishes are going to go into the oven together. I'm going to put the cauliflower cheese on the top and the veg just below, and they're going to go on 180 fan for about 30 minutes until they look cooked. Okay, out of the oven after half an hour. As you can see, we've got a a nice crunchy top and I can see the sauce bubbling away underneath. My roasted veg could have probably be done with a little bit longer but that's okay it's still going to be delicious so let's serve this and eat. Oh, 
Oh, here we have my rusty topped cauliflower cheese. Mm. Let's see what it's like. It's nice and crisp on top. And the sauce is still thick, mm. which is good. Mmm. Mmm. That's nice. It's good. The cauliflower is firm. It's not overcooked. That's interesting, that rusty top. Yeah, I think so. Mm. I think it's lovely. But it's cauliflower and cheesy and potato-y and vegetable-y. It's yeah, exactly. very lovely. Mm. It's, it, it's lovely because it, the sauce has stayed really thick. We've gotten up, you know, we've got away from the chance of having watery remainder of the cauliflower juice in the bottom. And everything's cooked well, not overcooked. It's another winner. Mm. Mm. The oats give it an extra crunch on top. Mm. And I think the almonds help to maintain a thick sauce. Lovely. Thanks for watching. And more portions. Bye for now.